Okay, now let's take the uh, reverse clutch drum apart. Take a small screwdriver, find the opening to the snap ring, lift it out, pop it out, and should be able to just simply flip it over to get the clutch pack out. And let's take a look at the clutch pack. Okay, well look, this is the top plate. You'll see it's got a little step on it. And it looks good. And the fibers, the steels, fibers, they look very good. You rarely see a reverse clutch damaged because really it only comes on in reverse. You get all this. This happens to be a uh, four plate fiber. Sometimes you'll find a three plate. And you have the bottom pressure plate. It also has a step, but you'll notice that the, the step has a rounded surface here because that rides up against the Belleville spring that's inside the uh, drum. These look in good shape. Of course, if you have an overhaul kit, you know, you'll put new clutches in. You'll need a little bit larger screwdriver for this. And you may need actually even another screwdriver to get under it once you pull it out. Let's see if we can get it out. There we go. And then just walk it around. You know, about a half an inch at a time here. And it may get stuck in the top groove. You know, you'll have to pop it back out again. Let's see. There we go. There we go. You'll also notice that this uh, snap ring has a wave built into it. That's the, that creates a slight cushion effect. So when you put it in reverse, when the piston comes up, it kind of squeezes the wave of this snap ring kind of helps the uh, engagement uh, smooth out a little bit. Put that aside, then you have the Belleville spring, and of course the Belleville spring will have a bow in it, that's what makes it work. If you ever see one of these flat or cracked, of course it'd have to be replaced. Then you have a ring that the Belleville spring rides on. Let me get under it with a little screwdriver, pop that out. There we go. See? Put that aside. Now to get the piston out, you could kind of tap it on the floor, but there may be a danger of breaking these lugs off. So the best thing is to go in the side here with the air blower and blow air in it and that should pop it out. So we'll do that. I'll go ahead and flip it over. And you may have to hold your finger on the other side because there's two holes. And blow air right in the other hole. And I think I popped it out. Yeah. And I should be able to lift it out if I have a little bit of trouble. I may need some needle nose pliers. And there we go. This also has uh, seals on it, but these are square cut seals. They are not lip seals. And use a pick tool if you need to to remove the seals. You also want to look at the piston. There's a little ball check in there. So you want to make sure it's there. And when we clean it up, we want to hear it rattle when we put it back together. Now we'll flip the uh, drum over. And on this side, we have the intermediate one-way clutch. You have a big snap ring here. We need to take that off. Retainer, remove that. Then you have the one way clutch race. You'll turn it counterclockwise and lift to take that off. And then you have the one way clutch uh, itself. We'll slide that up and take a look at it. Okay, this version has uh, seven rollers and seven springs. There's another version that has 14 rollers. And of course, if you have a 4R70W that was made 98 or later, you would have the uh, what they call mechanical diode, and we'll show that a little later. Just like with the, uh, the first gear one-way clutch that we looked at earlier, you want to take the rollers out and look at these springs very carefully. Any damage on the springs, any cracks, anything like that, pitting on the rollers, you should replace it. In fact, I believe if you've got... Uh, you know, a unit that's got maybe 100,000 miles or more, you probably should replace this anyway.
Everything is all cleaned up. We're going to start putting this back together and we'll start with the one-way clutch. Now I've already looked at the clutch and the springs and the rollers look fine. I just have a couple more rollers to install. Just kind of push out on the spring a little bit and install the roller. Okay, there is an upside and a downside. You'll find it really only fits right one way. And a quick way of telling is you'll see these pins that are on the back side that protrude. Those face down and the smooth side is up. And you just line up the little kind of sawtooth uh, pattern that's on the retainer with the uh, same pattern that's on the drum. You just line it up, kind of get it positioned. You may have to kind of push out on a couple of the rollers just to get it started. Yeah, that one right there. There you go. And then drop it right down. Now we'll put the race, same thing. You'll see there's a kind of a flat side on one side and you'll see a kind of a chamfered side on the other. The chamfered side faces up. You just line it up and remember, turn it, kind of turn it counterclockwise as you're dropping it. And it'll, it'll slowly work its way down on it. Got to get it good and square. There you go. And again, just like we saw before, it will turn counterclockwise, but locks clockwise. And it may make that little squeak and that isn't hurting anything. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of uh, lube, a little bit of transmission fluid down in it. Then we'll put the retainer on and you'll see these little tabs line up with the, the little tab slots that are in the drum itself. And then we put a new snap ring on. Now these snap rings are famous for flying off. I would suggest always get a new snap ring. They are available. Uh, once you've spread it out with the um, pair of pliers, I think they lose a little bit of the tension. It has such a wide cross section. Uh, I would rather, instead of using a snap ring pliers to install them, I just kind of start one side and walk it around. And that seems to work pretty good. There we go. Okay, always make sure that the uh, opening of the snap ring is not where the tabs are, here and here. You want the uh, snap ring opening to be away from the tabs. And if you have too much trouble getting this on like I just showed you, you know, use some uh, snap ring pliers, but be very careful and not overstretch that snap ring. And I'll flip it over. Squirt a little bit of transmission fluid down in the piston cavity. Make sure it's all nice and lubed up. And now we'll put the seals on the uh, piston. And of course these are square cut seals. We'll put a little bit of transmission fluid on them. And simply put them down in the grooves. Make sure it's seated. Put the inside one on, lube it up a little bit. And put it on in the groove. Make sure it's good and seated. Now we'll install it in the drum. Okay, anyone that's familiar with the old cast drums that were on the old AODs, uh, you needed a seal protector for the outside, and that's because the ledge was sharp right here. However, the, the stamped drums that's used on the AODEs and 4R70Ws have a slight chamfer. You know, it's got a little bit of a, a bevel here. So it should go right down on it. That's not to say that it doesn't uh, take a little bit of effort. Also, we want to make sure that that little ball check is okay. And you can probably hear it, it's, it's popping up and down, so we know it's loose in there like we want, but it is in there. If you ever see one missing, you're going to need to replace the piston. All right, we'll just set it down in there and just slowly, by using thumb pressure, work your way around. It'll take a little bit to get it in, but eventually it'll squeeze on down in there.
Yeah, we good. Just about got it. All right. I think we got it all the way down. All right. Then we need to put that little uh, metal ring on there that goes down in the groove that's in the piston. Then we take the Belleville spring and go on top of that. And now we need to put that uh, snap ring, you know, the one that's got the little wave on it. Now it's going to take a little bit of effort to get this in there. Um, you just start one corner and you've got to work it in with a big screwdriver. And because there's some tension on the Belleville spring, so let me just get it started. Get it down in there. Get it started. All right. Now, what I'll do, I'll take the big screwdriver and get it down in the groove. Now, it started in the groove, and I've got to work my way around only about a half inch at a time. If it gets to where it's not going in, it could be that the Belleville spring is actually stuck in the groove, and so you'll have to kind of push the Belleville spring away from it. And all I can tell you is you're going to have to kind of tap it down. Might need a little hammer to help you. And just work your way around. Alright, I believe I got it in there. Now you want to go all the way around and make sure it's fully seated. Okay, I think we have it. Now we put the lower pressure plate on. Remember, both of them have a step but it's the one that has the rounded edge on the step. That's the one that goes down next to the Belleville spring. So we'll just drop that in place. Now off camera, I've been soaking these uh, clutches in uh, transmission fluid in a little tray that I have. You want to do it for at least 15, 20 minutes. So we'll just now alternate. You got a fiber, steel, fiber, steel, fiber, steel, the last fiber, and remember this was a four fiber uh, unit. You may find one that just has three. You put the top pressure plate on, it's got the step, but it's flat on top of that step. And of course the smooth side goes down toward the clutch. And drop that down in there. Then tape, take your snap ring and go ahead and install the snap ring. Now we want to check the uh, clutch pack clearance. Okay, the clutch pack clearance for the reverse clutch varies from shop manual to shop manual, but generally speaking, it's somewhere between 40 and 75 thousandths of an inch. So to check it, we first of all, we want to make sure that the snap ring is all the way up at the top of the groove, you know, go underneath of it with the screwdriver, make sure it's full up, and go take your feeler gauge. I'll use one of these, uh, you know, one's has got the little crook on it, and go between the pressure plate and that first fiber. And I've got a 30 thousandths, and of course it goes in super easy. So I'll take and put a 30 and a 28 together. We'll try that. And actually, I'm having a little trouble. I can't quite get that in there. And of course there's another way of doing it, and that is using the wire type gauges. Now I have one here, and with the wire gauge you can go between the pressure plate and the snap ring. So I have a 44 right there, so let me take a look. 44 goes in pretty easy, might have just a slight bit of tension, and you would check it in a couple places. And like I say, the 44, that does kind of go in there pretty easily. Let me try the next one, and that's a 54. Let's see if that'll go in. And actually a 54 goes in too, but it's a little bit tight. So that's telling me that it's very close to the minimum, minimum spec, which I believe would be all right for this application. I don't mind going a little bit loose on the reverse clutch, because again, all it's on is just in reverse any other time it's just simply creating friction there. But I believe this one will be fine.